Hey everybody, this is Mr. Moppin coming at you with a, another AP Gov video. Uh, this time we're taking a look at topic 4.1, focusing in on American attitudes about government and politics. Now, you know, when we talk about, you know, these attitudes that we have, these feelings about government and politics, it really speaks to this idea of political culture. I mean, there's culture in the sense of, you know, like a shared sense of language and religion and food and clothing and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but when we talk about political culture, it is, yes, shared, you know, values and beliefs and what we consider to be, you know, acceptable uh, items concerning the way that the government should be acting with regards to, you know, political and economic matters. So, in other words, it's the idea of with regards to what the government should and should not be doing and what is protected and what is not protected, that common sense of values are what are known as a political culture. Uh, however, it's a little bit more complex than that uh, because that basic definition I just gave you is really what we call a consensual political culture where there is a sense that even though there might be some differences of opinion on certain policy matters, like say, you know, isolation or interventionism with regards to foreign policy or, you know, taxation, you know, regarding domestic policy, even though there might be some differences on policy, there is a broad sense of values uh, that are shared across the board uh, in a political culture, in a society, that there's a lot of things holding them together even though there might be some policy differences. You see consensual political cultures in very stable democracies. Uh, you know, so today you, know, you would say like Canada is, you know, is a great example of a consensual political culture, even though, you know, it's not perfect, it's consensual. You know, the United Kingdom, Japan, Germany, you know, these are all countries that have a consensual political culture. But then there's also what we call conflictual political cultures, where there isn't very much holding the society together in terms of their political values, that there's a, such diametrically opposed feelings. And I, and I shouldn't even just use the term diametric, because that would assume that there's two differences. There might be, you know, a, a wide spectrum, a plethora of all sorts of different values that uh, might be shared in relatively equal numbers within one society. Uh, we tend to see countries that are the victims of imperialism tending to be victims of this to some degree because you are seeing this mishmash of different ethnicities and religions that kind of get jammed together with different political and economic traditions, and that's been hard to rectify. Uh, we also see countries, and this is probably not a big surprise, countries that tend to have a lot of political revolutions, civil wars, things like that, they have what's called a conflictual political culture. Now, we haven't mentioned the United States. And, you know, traditionally, if we were asking, you know, is the United States a consensual political culture or a conflictual or a conflicted political culture, it would be a very easy answer. It would be a consensual political culture. And there's still, obviously, a lot of support for that. And, you know, you can definitely make a strong argument that that is what it is. Although some might argue today that we may be moving in a conflicted uh, political, cultural direction uh, over the last, you know, 10 to 20 years. Uh, you know, so it's, it's a lot more of a debatable topic than it used to be. Uh, but I think today, if you were to poll, you know, the vast majority of political science, it would still be viewed as a consensual political culture, though maybe not as consensual as it may have been in the past. Okay. So if we are to take the, uh, you know, the idea that we have, uh, you know, a consensual political culture, well, you know, we need to be aware of what kind of ties us together. And before we tie, you know, these core values together, we should be familiar once again that you don't have to have a unified country politically on policy to have consensual political culture. You know, and in our country, we certainly do not have unilateral, unanimous agreement on policy matters. 
in our country, we tend to have, you know, uh, two broad areas of, you know, political ideology that tend to encapsulate how different the two major groups view specific policy matters. And you, you've heard these, you know, labels before. This should not be new to you. But, you know, uh, on the right, we have what we call conservatives. And once again, conservatives believe in traditional uh, values socially. They believe in small federal government, you know, more state government authority. Uh, these folks tend to be more in support for the necessity of law and order as opposed to individual expression. Uh, you know, these are folks that believe in much more economic freedom uh, than social welfare uh, protection. You know, so that's, you know, that's kind of a general ideology. And yes, you know, the vast majority of Republicans would kind of identify themselves in that way. And then you have as the other major prevailing ideology is uh, liberalism. Uh, these are folks that are considered to be on the left wing. And, you know, these are folks that are much more willing to embrace change on a social level. Uh, they tend to believe that, you know, larger federal government action is important and necessary to provide equal opportunity, whereas conservatives are, tend to be much more focused on individual liberty. Uh, liberals tend to, you know, believe that, uh, you know, there needs to be government regulation of the economy, strong government regulation of the economy to be able to protect workers, protect the environment, uh, things like that. Uh, so these were, you know, these are just two very, very, very simplified uh, explanations of the two major prevailing political ideologies in America. Now, there are moderates. Uh, there are folks that do go beyond, you know, simple liberalism and conservatism. Yes, we do have those folks. But the vast majority of Americans would identify themselves as some type of conservative or some type of liberal uh, today. So keep in mind, you know, you don't have to have everybody having the same ideology to have a consensual political culture. And so, okay, the next question is, well, what are these things that tie us together in our society? Okay, well, let's take a look at the first of these, you know, major consensual values. And that is a almost universal belief in liberty and individualism. Uh, you know, we believe as a society that we get our rights from some type of creator. Now, you know, it, there's a whole, you know, difference of opinion in terms of, you know, what that creator is. You know, is it a Judeo-Christian God? You know, is it something else or, you know, whatever. But it doesn't matter who you are. Liberal, conservative, you, we all believe that we are born with rights that rights are not created by the government. And that is absolutely important to keep in mind because things that are created by government can rationally be taken away by government. Uh, therefore, if we believe that government creates our rights, then, then the government would have, you know, would be totally entitled to take away our rights. And we don't believe that. So, you know, we believe that everybody has liberty, that everybody has basic rights, basic protection. If we look at the Bill of Rights, you know, that sees, you know, a lot of what we're talking about there. Uh, but notes, when we kind of broaden this out, there's also a sense that, you know, we do believe that everybody should have the opportunity to chart their own course, to, you know, be able to pursue their own interests, to, you know, have the kind of life that they want to have, you know, we're all different people, and so there's a general you know, understanding that we are all entitled, should be entitled, to do what we want to do. Careers and occupations should not be forced upon you. Uh, you know, whether or not you want to have a family should not be forced upon you. You know, we have a sense that we should be able to live where we want, have the kind of job that we want, you know, live the life that we want. And that, once again, that's not a liberal or a conservative thing. That's a universal thing that we as Americans strongly adhere to, you know, this sense of individualism. Uh, but there is some degree of difference, that being said, on what individualism means, especially if you go through the prism of political ideology. Uh, you know, there is what we would consider to be 
self-centered individualism, which is a much more libertarian idea of it, meaning that individualism in this case means that I, my needs are superior, are more important than everybody else's needs, okay? Therefore, you don't really need much government because at the end of the day, it's not about the greater good per se. You're not really interested in that so much as what am I getting? What freedoms do I enjoy? You know, what liberty do I have? You know, that's kind of a sense of self-centered individual, the idea of I get to do what I want to do, okay? But then there's also what's known as enlightened individualism, which is a sense of a more willing embrace of government intervention in society out of the notion that, well, if the government intervenes to help everybody, well, I am part of everybody, and therefore I am going to benefit from this. I, I want my, my personal situation, individual situation improved, and that can be done through government intervention. So the idea being of, you know, let's say, you know, government-supported schools, public schools. Uh, if the government provides that for everybody, if the government gets in the education business, well, then everybody's kids get to benefit from that. And if you, you know, the vast majority of people have kids, well, okay, my kids will benefit from that. That's an individual, you know, desire as a parent to have your kids properly educated. And if the government gets involved and everybody gets properly educated, then my, you know, one's kids get to benefit from that as well. Uh, so there's kind of differences of opinion as, as uh, you know, speaks to that. Now, uh, another key component, you know, and to some degree, you know, kind of conflicts with the value of individualism, even though we believe in both of these, you know, uh, equally, is that not only do we believe in individual liberty, protecting that value, but we also believe, as Americans, in equality of opportunity. Uh, it, the idea of equality of opportunity is not a liberal nor a conservative idea exclusively. It's the idea that no matter who you are, doesn't matter what, you know, what gender, what ethnicity, you know, what uh, religion you, you uh, practice, what your sexual orientation is, is that everybody should have the opportunity to, you know, be able to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. You know, that everybody gets to do that. You know, we don't believe that there's a certain core group of people that only get to enjoy that and everybody else is relegated to some level of subservience and domination and stuff like that. We don't we don't believe that. You know, everybody just about across the board believes that everybody is entitled to that. And we see that cemented in, you know, the Constitution via the 14th Amendment, of course, the Equal Protection Clause. And we also see that with additional pieces of legislation, including the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So, you know, at the same time, it's kind of interesting. We strongly value individualism as a society across the ideological spectrum. But at the same time, we also broadly support the idea of equal opportunity uh, across the spectrum, across the ideological spectrum. So, anyhow, we're going to leave it here for this, uh, this video. We'll come back with a second video to kind of round out uh, some more of these values. Okay, we'll see you next time.